Welcome on this holy evening, the evening of the Mass of the Last Supper and a pilgrimage to seven churches. The tradition of visiting seven churches on Holy Thursday probably originated in Rome as early pilgrims visited the seven basilicas as penance. The Via Francigena was an ancient pilgrim route between England and Rome. It was customary to end the pilgrimage with a visit to the tombs of Saints Peter and Paul and to a pilgrimage of seven churches. Visitation of seven churches has become a pretty well-known and loved tradition in the Buffalo area. We are blessed that we still have seven churches in close proximity to enable us to do so. When I tell out-of-towners about this tradition, many say that they would have to travel hours to do so where they live. The most famous area to visit churches on Holy Thursday in Buffalo is on the east side, where one can pray and admire the beautiful edifices built by poor immigrants many from my native country of Poland. These people loved God and the church so much that they dedicated their time, talents, and what little money they had to honor God. Last year, because of the pandemic, we took part in a virtual tour of seven East Side churches, better known as One Night Seven Churches. Once again this year, we are unable to make our bus pilgrimage, and so we will be taking an armchair pilgrimage to seven amazing churches in the United States, Canada, and Europe. I ask you to put all thoughts in, of your mind out of your mind, except for God, and travel with us to these holy places. You will be presented with the name of the church, its location, pictures, and a description of the church and its namesake. Then you will be asked to pray the prayer at the end of the church's description. We welcome you on board. Saint Anne de Beaupre. The Basilica of Saint Anne de Beaupre is located on the shores of the Saint Lawrence River in Quebec, Canada. It is named for the mother of our Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Anne. Mary was born through the Immaculate Conception. She was conceived and born without the taint of original sin. Little is known about Anne except that she was married to Mary's father, Jochum. They prayed fervently for God to bless them with a child, as Anne was unable to conceive for many years. The basilica was built in the fertile farmland of the Beaupre hillside near Quebec City. A missionary, Father Vignal, came to the site for the proposed chapel and blessed the foundations of the chapel. On that very day, a Louis Guimont, an inhabitant of Beaupre, who suffered terribly from rheumatism, showed his faith in St. Anne by placing three stones in the foundation of the building. He found himself suddenly and completely cured of his affliction. St. Anne's approval of this endeavor has shown through this miracle of healing for Louis. Since that day, St. Anne's has been the site of many healings and graces of all kinds. Pilgrims from all over North America came to the Basilica to seek healing, making it comparable to the great pilgrimages to Lourdes in France. The church became a minor basilica, 
by Pope Leo XIII on May 5th, 1887. It was solemnly consecrated on May 19th, 1889. As you enter the basilica on either side of the main doorway are huge mounds of crutches, walking sticks, bandages, and other aids left behind by those who have been cured through the intercession of St. Anne. Let us pray. O oh, good St. Anne, you have for many years welcomed, listened, and guided numerous pilgrims. So I humbly present myself to you. Intercede for me so that I may not extinguish in my heart the fire of the Holy Spirit. Following your example, I want to let the Spirit be active in my life. May the Spirit give me the strength to choose that which is true and which will give life abundantly in me and to those around me. May it renew my own attachment to your grandson, Jesus. I want to live faithfully in him. I trust to your care, St. Anne, those who are dear to me and those who I find difficult to love. May the Spirit breathe the love of Jesus in me so that I might live it fully. It is in this way that you love us and that God continues to show his love for us. Amen. And now on our pilgrimage, we are flying across the ocean to Barcelona, Spain. And we are visiting the Basilica de la Sagrada Familia, or the Basilica of the Whole Holy Family, which is located in Barcelona. It was begun in the year 1882 by the architect Francisco de Paula de Velar. Velar resigned in 1883 and the work was turned over to Antony Gaudi. Gaudi worked on the building until his death in 1926 and was buried in the crypt. The basilica combines the Gothic and Art Nouveau, very common styles for Gaudi in his architecture. At the time of Gaudi's death, the church was only about 25% completed. In 2010, the church was consecrated by Pope Benedict XVI and proclaimed a minor basilica. The basilica relies solely on private funds and has progressed very slowly over the years. It is anticipated that the basilica will be completed by 2026, the centenary of Gaudi's death. 10 more spires still need to be completed each symbolizing an important biblical figure in the New Testament. The Basilica has been named in honor of the Holy Family, Joseph, the foster father of Jesus, Mary, his mother, and Jesus. The Holy Family is looked upon as the perfect example and model of what family life should be. The feast day is held on the Sunday between Christmas and New Year. If both fall on a Sunday, then the feast is celebrated on December 30th. Let us pray. Jesus, Son of God and Son of Mary, bless our family. Graciously inspire in us the unity, peace, and mutual love that you found in your own family in the little town of Nazareth. Mary, Mother of Jesus and our Mother, Nourish our family with your faith and your love. Keep us close to your son, Jesus, in all our sorrows and joys. Joseph, foster father to Jesus, guardian and spouse of Mary, keep our family safe from harm. Help us in all times of discouragement or anxiety. Holy Family of Nazareth, Make our home, our family, one with you. Help us to be instruments of peace. Grant that love, 
strengthened by grace, may prove mightier than all the weaknesses and trials through which our families sometimes pass. May we always have God at the center of our hearts and homes until we are all one family, happy and at peace in our true home with you. Amen. Our next stop is the Cathedral of Notre Dame de Paris, which means Our Lady of Paris. And it was built in honor of Jesus' mother Mary and was begun in 1163 under Bishop Maurice de Sully. It was largely complete by 1260. It has been modified many times over the years and is currently closed due to the tragic fire which occurred on April 15, 2019. Interest in the cathedral soared after Victor Hugo's publication of the novel Notre Dame de Paris, better known in English as The Hunchback of Notre Dame. The cathedral is one of the most widely recognized symbols of the city of Paris and of the French nation. Approximately 12 million people visit Notre Dame when it is open. It is the most visited monument in Paris. Over the years, the cathedral has been stripped of some of its original decorations and artworks. However, there are still many examples of Gothic, Baroque, and 19th century art pieces which remain in the collection. A relic of the crown of thorns and a nail from the true cross are preserved at Notre Dame. Mary, Jesus' mother, was conceived without original sin to her parents, Anne and Joachim. She was a young woman betrothed to Joseph when she said yes to the angel who told her that she would become pregnant with Jesus, the Son of God. Mary lived in Nazareth and was alive to see her son murdered by those who opposed his teachings. She was assumed body and soul into heaven, where she reigns as queen of heaven. We will pray the um, prayer that St. John Paul II prayed at Notre Dame in 1980. Let us pray. Virgin Mary, at the heart of the city, we pray to you for this capital city. You, intact, preserve the purity of its faith. Virgin Mary, from the banks of the Seine, we pray to you for the country of France. O oh, Mother, teach it to hope. Virgin Mary, in this great Christian sight, we pray to you for all the earth's people. You, full of grace, may they be one in love. Amen. And now we travel to Rome to St. Peter's Basilica, which is also called the New St. Peter's Basilica. It is located in Vatican City, which is an enclave in Rome. It was begun by Pope Julius II in 1506 and completed in 1615 under Pope Paul V. It is designed as a three-aisled Latin cross with a dome at the crossing directly above the high altar which covers the shrine of St. Peter the Apostle. This basilica is the second one built on this spot. The first one was deteriorating, and Pope Nicholas V ordered Bernardo Rossellino to begin the construction of a new apse west of the old one. As the popes and architects died, the building was stalled at times and passed on down to new popes and builders. St. Peter's is filled with many masterpieces of Baroque and Re Renaissance art, with the most famous being Michelangelo's Pieta. Many of the popes and other famous people are entombed within the basilica. The latest pope to be buried there was St. Pope John Paul II. St. Peter's is named for St. Peter, one of Jesus' apostles. He is also known as Simon Peter, 
He and his brother Andrew, who were fishermen, were called by Jesus to be fishers of men. Peter was the first and most prominent of the apostles. He followed Jesus along with the other apostles around the countryside and was a witness to many of Jesus' miracles. Peter's own mother-in-law was the recipient of a miracle of healing by Jesus. As soon as she was cured, the woman got up and waited on the guests present in the home. St. Peter was the first bishop of Rome and also the first pope of the Roman Catholic Church. Jesus said to Peter, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. In 1968, Pope Paul VI made the announcement that the bones of St. Peter were discovered underneath St. Peter's. However, the actual date of the find was about 20 years earlier during the reign of Pope Pius XII. Let us pray. O glorious St. Peter, who in return for thy strong and generous faith, thy profound and sincere humility, and thy burning love, was regarded, rewarded by Jesus Christ with singular privileges, and in particular with the leadership of the other apostles and the primacy of the whole church, of which thou wast made the foundation stone. Do thou obtain for us the grace of a lively faith that shall not fear to profess itself openly in its entirety and in all of its manifestations, even to the shedding of blood, if occasion should demand it, and to sacrifice of life itself rather than surrender. Obtain for us likewise a sincere loyalty to our Holy Mother, the Church, Grant that we, we may ever remain most closely and sincerely united to the Roman pontiff, who is the heir of thy faith and of thy authority, the one true visible head of the Catholic Church, that mystic ark outside of which there is no salvation. Grant, moreover, that we may follow in all humility and meekness her teaching and her advice, and may be obedient to all her precepts in order to be able here on earth to enjoy a peace that is sure and undisturbed and to attain one day in heaven to everlasting happiness. Amen. And now we travel to Poland to the Jasna Gura Monastery, which is the home of the icon of the, blessed, the Black Madonna of Częstochowa. The monastery is located in the small Polish town of Częstochowa. Jasna Gura means luminous mountain in the Polish language. There are a few theories as to where the beautiful icon came from, including that it was painted by St. Luke who painted on a cedar tabletop from the Holy Family House. The same legend states that the painting was found by St. Helena in Jerusalem in 326. She brought it back to Constantinople and presented it to her son, Constantine. The icon was eventually transported to Bells, where the fortress was attacked by the Taters, and an arrow struck the lady in the neck. The Duke of Opol fled with the icon, fearing that the icon would be captured. As he neared Częstochowa, his horse refused to go on. He was instructed in a dream to leave the icon there. He encouraged a group of monks to build a monastery in Częstochowa and entrusted them with the care of our Blessed Lady. During an attack by the Hussites, the image was stolen from the monastery. A soldier slashed Our Lady's cheek two times. On his third attempt, attempted strike, it is said that he was struck dead through the power of Our Lady. Although many artists have tried to restore the icon, the slashes always come through the restorations. 
The image of Our Lady of Częstochowa gets its nickname Black Madonna from the soot residue which discolors the painting as a result of centuries of votive lights and candles burned in front of it. Since the fall of communism in Poland, pilgrimage to the image have significantly increased. Another interesting fact about the icon is that the clothing that Our Lady and Jesus wear is removable. The clothing is on a frame which is changed every five years. The monk in charge of the icon also cleans the image every year. There are many changes for the icon made by the faithful. Some are made out of amber and other natural materials. Let us pray. Holy Mother of Częstochowa, thou art full of grace, goodness, and mercy. I consecrate to thee all my thoughts, words, and actions, my soul and body. I beseech thy blessings and especially prayers for my salvation. Today, I consecrate myself to thee, good mother, totally, with body and soul, amid joy and sufferings, to obtain for myself and others thy blessings on this earth and eternal life in heaven. Amen. The sixth church that we are visiting is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is also known as the Church of the Resurrection. It is located in the ancient city of Jerusalem. It is the holiest Christian church in the world. The church is built over the place of Jesus' crucifixion and tomb. The church is unique among religious sites, as it is partially controlled by several Christian churches, the Roman Catholic Church, Greek Orthodox Church, and Armenian Apostolic Church, each share control of the building, and other Orthodox churches also celebrate divine liturgy at the site. After seeing a vision of the cross in the sky in 312, Constantine the Great converted to Christianity, signed the Edict of Milan, legalizing the religion, and sent his mother Helena to Jerusalem to look for Christ's tomb. With the help of the bishops of Caesarea and Jerusalem, three crosses were found near a tomb, leading the Romans to believe that they had found Calvary. Constantine ordered that the Temple of Jupiter, Venus, be replaced by a church around 326 AD. After the temple was torn down, a cave was found, and the earth removed, revealing a rock-cut tomb that was identified as the burial site of Jesus. A shrine was constructed at the site. The church was built over the two sites. One, the Great Basilica, which houses the traditional site of Calvary, and across a courtyard, a rotunda, where it is believed that Jesus is buried. The church was consecrated on September 13, 335. The church has survived many upheavals, including fire, an earthquake, and battles for possession by different religious groups. The church is the site of many pilgrimages and services by different religious denominations. And now let us pray the prayer which was found under Christ's sepulchre in 1503 A.D. O God Almighty, who suffered death upon the cross, particularly for my sins, be with me. Holy cross of Jesus, have pity on me. Holy cross of Jesus, be my protector. Holy cross of Jesus, take away all bitter pains. Holy cross of Jesus, 
take away all evil. Holy cross of Jesus, let me walk in the way of salvation. Preserve me from any temporal, temporal accidents. Take away any danger of sudden death. I always adore the holy cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus of Nazareth crucified, have pity on me. Make the spirit of evil leave me for all times. O mother of perpetual succor, I come before thy sacred picture and with a childlike conscience invoke thine aid. Show thyself a mother to me now. Have pity on me. O dearest mother of perpetual succor, for the love thou bearest to Jesus and in honor of his sacred wounds, help me in this my necessity. O loving mother, I leave all to thee in the name of the Father. I leave all to thee in the name of the Son. I leave all to thee in the name of the Holy Spirit. Our Lady of Perpetual Succor, pray for us. Our Lady of Perpetual Succor, pray for us. Our Lady of Perpetual Succor, pray for us. Amen. And now we're flying across the ocean back home to Washington, D.C., the capital of our country. And here we will visit the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. It is both a shrine and a basilica. It is adjacent to the Catholic University of America. It is the largest Christian church in the United States and in North America, and one of the largest in the world. Construction was born, was begun on September 23, 1920, and was completed on December 8, 2017, the fe Feast of the Immaculate Conception. The United States has been known as a melting pot, and the Basilica is proud to reflect the rich heritage of America. The Basilica is home to more than 80 chapels and oratories honoring the Mother of God, and representing people from every corner of the globe that have come to make the United States their home. It also represents the universality of the Roman Catholic Church. The Basilica was built by generations of faithful American Catholics to honor the patroness of our nation, the Blessed Virgin Mary, under her title of the Immaculate Conception. The National Shrine is affectionately referred to as America's Catholic Church. The Americas have been dedicated to our Blessed Lady, as it is said that Mary has been a part of the Western Hemisphere dating back to Christopher Columbus. One of his ships was called the Santa Maria, and he and his sailors sang the Salve Regina every night in her honor. Many rivers and waterways were named in honor of our great lady. The title of the Immaculate Conception comes from the fact that Mary was conceived without sin. She was the perfect person to carry and deliver the Son of God into the world. Let us pray. O oh, Immaculate Mother, Queen of our country, open our hearts, our homes, and our land to the coming of Jesus, your divine Son. With him reign over us, O heavenly Lady, so pure and so bright, with the radiance of God's light shining in and about you. Be our leader against the powers of evil set upon wrestling the world of souls, resting the world of souls redeemed at such great cost by the sufferings of your Son and of yourself in union with him from that same Savior who loves us with infinite charity. We gather about you, O chaste and holy Mother, Virgin Immaculate, patroness of our beloved land, determined to fight under your banner of holy purity 
against the wickedness that would make all the world an abyss of evil without God and without your loving maternal care. We consecrate our hearts, our homes, our land to your most pure heart, O great queen, that the kingdom of your son, our redeemer, and our God may be firmly established in us. We ask no special sign of you, sweet mother, for we believe in your great love for us, and we place in you our entire confidence. We promise to honor you by faith, love, and the purity of our lives according to your desire. Reign over us then, O Virgin Immaculate, with your Son, Jesus Christ. May his divine heart and your most chaste heart be ever enthroned and glorified among us. Use us, your children of America, as your instruments of peace among men and nations. Work your miracles of grace in us so that we may be a glory to the Blessed Trinity who created, redeemed, and sanctified us. May your valiant spouse, St. Joseph, with the holy angels and saints, assist you and us in renewing the face of the earth. Then, when our work is over, come, holy immaculate mother, and as our victorious queen, lead us to the eternal kingdom, where your son reigns forever as king. Amen. Now that we have arrived safely back in Buffalo, let's pray together the Our Father and Hail Mary. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you for traveling with us on this special evening and remind you that there are services coming up on tomorrow, Good Friday, as well as Holy Saturday, and of course, Easter Sunday. If you are unable to attend, we ask you to tune into our YouTube channel at 14 Holy Helpers Parish. I along with Father David and the rest of our staff, wish you a very blessed, holy, and happy Easter. And hopefully next year, we will be gathering on buses to visit and pray at seven Buffalo churches. I wish you God's blessings and have a wonderful evening. Good night. <laughs>